Bonaduce, a live coach. Danny Bonaduce, a live coach. That is me. I am, in fact, Danny Bonaduce, life coach. Call me right now. 1 800 252 1025. Oh, and get your uh, email 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Lifecoach at KZOK.com. Life Coach brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce for Men. Call 1 800 Divorce. Let's start with Fran in Bellevue. Good morning, Fran. Good morning, Danny. What's up, man? How much? How are you doing? Uh, all good. What can I do for you? Well, uh, I've been going out with this girl since January. Yeah. And I moved in with her Sunday. Okay. And the day I move in, I find out that her friend from from three years old on is wanting to make things more than what they are. All right. So to break that code down, she's known this guy her whole life. And uh, you you believe or you know that he would like to have an intimate, romantic, and sexual relationship with your girlfriend. Yes, right? and yeah, and, and I I went to a barbecue at his house, and you know we were getting along just fine and everything. And I don't think I can be the guy's friend now, but. I just want to know what to do. I, mean, I, I disagree with you, Fran. I, I don't think, uh, um, you know, I, I, and matter of fact, if you become good friends, you can say to him in all uh, 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 sensitivity, you missed this boat, man. You know what? And you have another beer with the guy and you go, I am terribly sorry. I, she's a great girl. I can see that you would have this feeling, but it's t you, you, you missed it, man. I got her. Uh, now, what is the thing about, what is she doing about this? So let, let me get one thing straight, Fran. She's never been intimate with this cat, has she? No. Okay, all right. So you're on iffy uh, grounds as far as I'm concerned because I have a hard and fast rule. And by the way, when I say I have a rule, that doesn't mean all the girls I've ever been with like agree with it. <laughs> I'm just saying this is my particular rule. If she ever had sex with the guy, he's out. You don't get to talk to him. You don't get to play. You don't get to meet for lunch. Oh, it means nothing. We were young. We're friends now. I don't care. You had sex with him. He's seen you naked. That's it. He's gone. But you, you got a guy. Nobody's done anything wrong yet, right? Right. All right, so how do you know he wants more than what he's got? Because she told me the okay. day I moved in. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and he, that's the day he tried. It's the same thing. What do you mean he tried? He put his hands on her? No, no, via phone. Uh, and so he told, you know, I've had feelings like this. Uh, do you know, and I'm, make, I'm cutting this guy an awful lot of slack because I should be saying, okay, this guy's gone by now. Do you know, has he had anything to drink that day? Did he say, oh, I've always loved you. I, I'm sorry I missed you. Or do you believe these are real feelings? Yeah, I do. But uh, his family even wants her, him to get together with her. He, you know, even even way back then, they wanted it. Yeah. It didn't happen. I, I, I see that. Uh, this is going to be all up to you, friend. This is this this is in your ballpark completely. You get to tell your girl. First of all, you get, have you told your girlfriend how you feel? Oh, absolutely. And what'd she say? She said that uh, she's with me, and that's what's going to happen. I, you know what? I think you need to take her at her word. Nothing's uh, happened. The fact that she jumped through a hoop to tell you that quickly means she's playing real fair with you. And now you have to be the guy, whether you're going to decide or not. I'm going to jump in between the middle of a lifelong friend because I don't like what he wants. And he wants your girl, no doubt about that. But there's going to be, you know, if they've spent holidays together, Christmases together, whatever they've done together... Are you going to be willing to guide that uh, stands in the middle of that? And I would say you keep an open dialogue with your girlfriend who's been nothing but above board with you. And I wouldn't make too many waves about this right now. And the second somebody's texting, you know, if this guy calls back, if she's told him no, and he goes back, you need to tell her at this point, no, he's out now. It hurts my feelings. And, and if you listen to the show, Fran, you know I always say this. If you love somebody and they love you back, whether they say, but we're just friends, it doesn't matter. If it hurts your feelings, that's enough, and that guy's gone. The second you think this hurts your feelings, rather than makes you mad, a lot of things make you mad, but if this starts to hurt your feelings, she's got to cut him out, and if she won't, then you have to look at that relationship, but I'll tell you this, you're a lucky guy. She's coming to you and saying, hey, this is what's happening. Everybody's being honest with you, friend. You're a lucky guy. Hey, thank you very much for the phone call. I appreciate it. This is Danny Bonaducci, Life Coach, and the next caller is John in Fife. Uh, no, it's oh, not. We just lost John. We're going to go down to James and Lacey. And by the way, phone lines are open if you would like to talk to the life They coach. are now. Thanks, Fife. At 800-252-1025. Here you go, James. Hey, James. Hi. Hi. What's up, buddy? Uh, I just don't know how to deal with my epilepsy condition. 
Well, the answer is medication, man. I, I actually used to date a girl named Jerry. Her father is kind of famous, so I won't think I'll mention that now because maybe they don't want that out. But in high school, I dated a girl, uh, Jerry with an I, who was epileptic. And you know what? Uh, and this is back, how long ago did I go to high school? 40 years ago? <laughs> 1976 this was. And they had medication. It didn't completely work. She had some, uh, what, what we called fits back then, not seizures. Uh but the medication, because I'm a big believer in medication, has has to have gotten better. So, how uh, what do you do to manage your epilepsy? Epilepsy. Um, I do take medication, but I I don't. I feel like it. Make they make them worse than everything. Well, Just you know, I, dude, you got to go right back to the doctor. Uh, you got to, whatever, whatever he's giving you, if it's just one thing and you believe it makes you work, because we're not talking about something like, you know, I take medication for, have a bipolar disorder. And if I ever thought it didn't work, first of all, it'd take me three or four months to decide, oh, I don't think that's working. It's not like seizures, man. If you, if it's not working and you're having seizures, you know, when was the last time you talked to your doctor? I just had an appointment this last, a couple weeks ago. And what did you tell him? The, the, these seizures just won't won't stop. And I'm telling you, James. I, you know, and I'm not one to step on a real doctor's toes. Let me make it perfectly clear: I'm not any kind of doctor whatsoever. But you're not the only uh, uh, epileptic in the world, and people are not. I'm reading the screen now. I didn't read it because I like to go in and not have any preconceived idea, but I'm reading it, and it says, has absolute epilepsy, birthday is coming up, and it makes me feel like I'm 90 years old. What's the best way to deal with the condition? Uh, I don't want to say that your doctor's wrong, but when was the last time you got a second opinion? I don't know. You but. need to go right to a doctor. You need to keep all your appointments. You're, the doctor you've been going to has all your blood work and all sorts of things that can't be replaced, although they can be moved to another doctor. But you need to look it up, talk around, maybe even ask him. I'm sure he's doing his best job, but I am telling you, you're not the only epileptic within the sound of my voice. There's a whole bunch, and uh, you know they're, they're not having seizures that they can't keep under control, and they're certainly not feeling like they're 90, and I know what you mean about epileptic. What do you take? Um, okay, the season right thing is this one, sir. Oh, uh, we're trying to get some light. James, man, you're, t uh, you know what, you're, I'm sure you're taking the right stuff and your doctor, but you should be way more functional than this. How old are you? Uh, it's called Dilantin. You're taking Dilantin? Mm-hmm. For seizures? I don't know. I, I, I need to find a, bit, a different doctor. Not, ne not necessarily true. I don't want to take you down the wrong road. I want you to keep that doctor because that's where all your work is and all the research and he knows you. While you keep that doctor, I want you to go to a specialist. Is this guy a specialist or is he the doctor you've had since you were a kid? Well, not since I was a kid, but I've had him for a while now. Yeah, I, I want you to keep him. That's very important. This guy knows you best. But while keeping him... Find somebody who specializes specifically in epilepsy. I think I think you're taking a dilantin. It's a fine drug, but it has a very serious sedative effect, and I don't know that, that that's across the board the best thing. And I tell you also, you're completely right, Danny. I know why I'm right. But it also says, I uh, just looked it up, that some of the more common side effects, decreased coordination, mental confusion, nervousness, slurred speech, and unsteadiness. God, Gibbons is on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right that maybe a second opinion yeah, this you drug need a isn't second, working for even if it's even as and this is how drugs work james and I, I will tell you i have some experience here that even if this drug is what's causing this you don't have to necessarily stop taking this drug you take another drug with this drug and uh, uh and put those two together because all sorts of drugs are are different from how they started when pfizer who was ever making them they said let's make this so uh people don't lose their hair and it turns out when you take it, uh, you grow an inch. So I said, well, nobody wants to lose their hair, but you're going to get an inch. So this is the greatest pill since sliced bread. I want you to talk to your doctor, and I want you to make at least one appointment with another doctor. Because this is a very tough pill to, put, to take, and maybe you can take it with somebody, something that's side effect is it's got a nice little pick-me-up on it. Uh, I, I don't know, but one or the other, but I'm telling you, James, you should not feel like this at your age. And I'm going to say the word just here because I, I have some knowledge of this. Just, 
uh, because you're an epileptic. It's it's. I don't want to say it's not that big a deal, but it's manageable, man. You need to talk, ask your doctor questions, and you need to see another doctor for a second. And that doctor needs to specialize in epilepsy. You're totally right. Uh, we've got a call from Stephen and Everett who would like to uh, see if he can help out as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, Stephen. Hey, what's up? Um, yeah, I'm an epileptic, and um, years ago I used to take that lamp. And, and if you're not in the uh, proper range, they can um, overtox you, and it sounds like that's what's going on with this guy. It does wow. sound like that's what's going on. I'm so glad you called because it proves one thing right. And, you know, it's fun to just be right during life coaches, you know. If, but this is serious. That's a serious matter. And uh, I said specifically this. You are not the only epileptic in the sound of my voice. So I appreciate, Stephen, that you called up. So do you agree with me? He just needs absolutely to see a specialist? Yeah, he does. He needs to change his medication probably to uh, gabapentin because that's what they put me on. And I'm completely haven't had a seizure in about four years. You know what, the difference. bro, do me a favor because we're mo talking so fast. I'm hoping he's still listening. Will you say the name of your current medication again? It's gabapentin, um, also known as Neurontin. Oh, Neurontin, yeah, absolutely yeah. a good medication. Yeah, it is. All right, thank, thank you so you, much Steven. for the call, Steve. I really do appreciate it. Who feels real good about themselves today? I do, I do. <laughs> You're helping a lot of people. Look James, at go. James, too, sounds like maybe he could benefit if he has somebody, somebody going with him to the doctor. I know yeah. well, a I lot of times... Right. I mean, but a lot of times you're at the doctor and they're talking real fast and, and you think you're following and you're not yeah, necessarily it following. Yeah, because he's in like a little bit of a fog and that's why he might yep. not want to stop taking that. Yep. Uh, this is Danny Bonaduce, Life Coach, with uh, Becky and Renton on the phone. Hey, Becky. Hi. Hi, good morning. Morning. I'm calling because I have a, um, a, a very good friend. He's a male co-worker. He's married and I'm single. We've been really wonderful friends for over a couple of years now. But in the last six months, he's begun to um, hug me goodbye and he kisses me on my lips. And my question is, is that a bad thing? I, 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 I know that sounds really ignorant, but. No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't at all. I mean, if the question is, uh, I got a married co-worker, I, I'm attracted to him in, in some way, I don't know what, I think I have feelings for him, and he gave me a little kiss and I uh, felt a little something, is that wrong? And he says, no, you're lucky. That's what that is. Now, are you going to cross any lines that you shouldn't cross? That is up, that's up to you. And if and when you do that, you need to call me back. But right now, this is what, this is like, you should treasure these kind of little moments. You're allowed to have secrets in your head of who I kind of like Becky's husband. And, and uh, he gave me a kiss. Ooh, I'm all on Twitter. But nobody's hurt. There are no losers here. So I think the, the answer to this is no, you've done no, you have done nothing wrong. And the fact that you appreciate it and are excited about it, that's the bonus round. Now, if you step over it and you uh, interfere with somebody in a whole life and marriage and possibly kids, well, then you need to call back. But right now, you're lucky. Have at it. Sneak in the little hugs. Nobody's getting hurt. You're a fine girl. And you're nice to even worry, Becky. Got time for one more caller uh, with Danny Bonaduce, Life Coach. It's John in Fife. Hey, John. Hey, good morning, Sunshine. Good morning, sweetheart. Let me just say uh, I applaud you and chip my beret off to you, sir, for everything that you've been through in your life that you've overcome and gone on a positive direction. Well, a, a guy in this position tipping his beret to me, yeah. I think <laughs> I'm the one who is honored. What can I do for you, John? Um, I call with a heavy heart. I just kind of put it out there as best as I can. Um, my daughter was in a past relationship many years ago. She got out of it for reasons being abusive on the mental side and from physical. Right. And I have a 16-year-old granddaughter that's involved with this now, too. She was then very young, and now she's 16. She, My daughter has just gotten remarried again. And he's an ex-soldier. He has PTSD severely, and I can relate to that because I've had it, but I've overcome and learned how to deal with mine. Uh, I've given him every directive I can that I know of that's out there for a network, you know, ex-soldiers, counselors, and everything. Um, he has his flare-ups. He likes his alcohol. And I know it's a double-edged sword right now, and I've tried to explain that to him. You can't combat one with the other. It's just going to work and just make it... You couldn't be more right. You are you're absolutely right about that, John. And my question to you is, uh, with what you've been through in that, I, I know I'm going on the positive directive. I love my daughter dearly, but I'm in fear. I, I, I just can't get her safety. It, it's just high on my emotions, you know, because... If this doesn't get under control, it's just going to escalate to 
And like I told her, I don't want to end up burying my daughter. She's supposed to bury. Uh, she's supposed to bury me. Boy, you know what? You'd be surprised at how similar these are to conversation. My wife, I've never gotten the opportunity to serve my country. I'd like to believe that I would uh, at the very best of my ability. But my wife's 25 years younger than I am. So we have the same. We have these morbid conversations about who's going to bury who. But it's natural selection. And this, I'm just getting older. This is scary. Now, do you believe that your daughter is in physical danger? Well, let's put it this way. A situation happened here, and I'll leave it at that. And it was just a matter of her waking him up. And he took it to an extreme. It was, he was woke up abruptly, and I, and I cautioned her because she knows about me from the past, how you wake somebody up and when they do have PTSD. And it escalated more than it needed to. And, and now, you know, the, the end of the week, and they're walking on eggshells around each other, and it's affecting basically families, the whole family. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you a yes or no because I'm running late on time on this. Is he in some kind of therapy? He started it, and he quit because he said he it wasn't getting him anywhere. He started something for the alcohol. He quit it. Now my daughter is basically demanding either you do this or... It's, it's done, because I'm not going to live this again. Well, you know, I've been fighting 20 years to get sober, and now I have 20 years of failure. Never succeeded, not once, six months at the most. I now got five years sober. There are absolutely ways to get sober. Uh, I need him to look into it. You need him to look into it. I got one weird side question, and I have to wrap this up. Uh, do you have a higher rank in the uh, armed forces than he does? Did I? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, there's my thing. I wonder... If he sees a superior officer, come on over telling him anything. Like, I'm out, man. You don't get to tell me anything more, Captain. You don't get to come down. So I would think, and I'm just guessing at this, but I think I was already a little bit right because you are a, a higher rank than he is. I think maybe you need to make sure he knows you are talking as a guy, a guy who has had his own difficulties and not given him any orders because he's out of the service and he doesn't have to take any, and I think that's how he's feeling. But that's not enough. We also need to get this guy sober. You got to look at AA. You got to call a doctor about all sorts of different medications that are coming out now because this is happening to so many people. People. It's more than manageable. I appreciate the call, John. I hope you will call me back with any kind of update on this. That's all the time we have for Danny Bauducci Life Coach. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your phone calls today. That was, you know, uh, that you let me into your life in that way. Uh, Danny Bauducci Life Coach is brought to you by Goldberg Jones, Divorce Call 1 800 Divorce. <laughs>